first domesticated by the ancient Incan civilization a few thousand years ago. They've been known to make pack animals for centuries, but are hardly ever ridden as they do possess a few nasty habits, like when angry they tend to spit. The llamas are a close South American relative of the camel, but they do not have the same distinctive hump that the camel possesses. And now you'll be able to see our herd of Watuzi cattle. These guys have the largest horns of any breed of cow. Their ancestry can easily be traced back over 6,000 years ago, making them one of the oldest breeds of cattle as well. The horns are actually used as the body's natural cooling system, similar to the radiator found in a vehicle. The blood will enter into the horns, where it is cooled down before it returns back into the body to cool down the whole cow. Very rare. African Lion Safari is pleased to announce that over 40 cheetah cubs have been born here at the park since 2001. Lions are the supreme hunters of the savannah, and hunting is generally done in groups. The lions will go out to surround their prey while one lion then goes in for the kill. Lions are able to kill animals by up to a thousand pounds. This brings us to know that most of the hunting is done by the lioness. The people normally associate the lion with Africa, yet as a species they were in Europe during the last ice age. The greatest numbers of them can be now be found in areas south of the Sahara, with a small number living under protection in the gear forest of India. <laughs> the male lion grows the mane. It begins developing at 15 months and is fully developed after 5 years. And the purpose of the mane is to make the male look more impressive to females, while also looking more intimidating to in color. This color comes from a genetic condition or chinchilla mutation that inhibits the deposition of pigments into their hair follicles. The animals we are just seeing are called carnivores. Yeah, they are trying to eat meat every single day. And this meat is supplemented with the necessary nutrients to promote good health. Oh, I thought you were like really smelling at it. They smell something. Uh oh, look at his lips. He's smelling something. This can live over 20 years of age and grow over 80 pounds. To play with a newborn, he does so by smacking his lips to the mother, indicating he means no harm. When the first born, baby baboons are said to weigh about half. You and I have our own unique set of fingerprints. Oh my goodness, look at that. A fully grown giraffe can weigh anywhere from 2,200 to 3,300 oh pounds. It can grow to be about 19 and a half feet tall, making it the tallest man animal on earth. When the first born, Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Although half the giraffe's height is composed of the neck alone, they do only have seven vertebrae, which is the same number as a mouse. Giraffes do, however, have very strong hearts. Their hearts are about the size of a basketball and can weigh up to 24 pounds. This large size is needed to pump the blood all the way up the long neck and into the brain. Now, as you'll be able to see, we do have two younger ones in our herd. The one over to the right is named v Viazzi, and the one just in front of us is named Kanali. <laughs> Now, as you may be able to see, in order for them, for them to feed off of the ground, they have to spread their front legs open wide in order to reach all the way down because they are so small. Even though the giraffe is so tall and awkward looking, they can actually run up to speeds of 48 kilometers an hour. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now 
Now, unfortunately, Barbary sheep are still being pursued by hunters in their native North African habitats, and their numbers are dwindling. Fortunately, small numbers of free roaming Barbary sheep have been introduced into canyons of the Colorado River and into parts of California and are surviving quite well. Now the males are the ones with the larger and curlier horns, as well as that large mane that runs from their chin all the way down to their front legs. We do have many in this reserve, as well as many young ones, as they do breed quite easily in captivity. Oh, lazy lions we saw earlier, giraffes will only sleep about 30 minutes a day, and they usually do so stink. If you get a closer look, their tongues are also a dark purplish or brown in color, and this is supposedly said to keep them from getting sunburned, as their tongues do spend a lot of time out exposed to the sun while the giraffes eat. Yes. That's a Venetian blind to help animal cope with the severe heat of Africa. It's a black stripe absorbing the heat while the white stripe reflects it. Now the deer species over to our left are called the nail guy, and the word translates to blue bull, which references to the males of the species being that slate gray in color that can look blue in some lights. The male nail guy has horns of about seven and a half inches long. Both the males and females have two white patches of hair on each cheek, as well as white lines above each hoof, which from a distance can look like they're wearing socks and sandals. Got it. Now the thick shaggy animals to our left are a type of ox called a yak and they are native to Tibet. Their thick shaggy coats allow them to survive snowstorms and they're able to live comfortably in temperatures as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius. These guys can grow to about, be about six and a half feet in height and weigh over 2,200 pounds. That's a lot of hair. Do you want to see? with the antlers that are currently in different stages of growth as they usually grow all throughout the summer. Around June, they usually do have most of their young, so you may be able to spot a number of babies around the reserve. Also on our left, we have our prairie bison.